and the eyes um, refer to visual surveys conducted by divers. I'll talk a little bit about the methods to describe them, some of the strengths and weaknesses, and how we're using them and why we're using them together to and present some data to show the complementarity. Uh, as Ali mentioned, the team that I lead is also part of the uh, Marine Parks Performance Program. So first cab off the rank is um, diver visual surveys. I won't go into too much detail, but they're normally conducted by two divers. A transect's 200 metres long. Divers go down and during that time they search for um, fish, macroinvertebrates such as lobster, abalone, sea stars, urchins, and they take photo quadrats of the algae. Uh, dives are only conducted on a single tank of air, and it's a common um, standardised method that's used to assess reefs around um, southern Australia. And the monitoring sites we're establishing form part of a, a network of over a thousand um, nationally. Bruvs or baited underwater remote video is the, uh, the second part of um, one of our main techniques. Bruvs are a solid metal frame with cameras attached and a bait basket. You can have one or two cameras. Uh, for our program we use two cameras uh, which give stereo vision which allows accurate measurement of fish. A bait basket um, contains mostly minced pilchards and that's to attract fish to maximise counts. Uh, Bruvs normally deployed on the sea floor for about an hour and then retrieved. And the second um, picture here is from the perspective of an analyzer in the office um, counting and measuring the fish. That's, a, that's the look they get. Um, we're using these methods because um, they're non-destructive. They're widely uh, used for marine parks around Australia and the world, and they also target fish. The diving does do other parts of the system, but you know, at the very um, most basic level, one of the management actions is removal of fishing, so we need a couple of methods that are tried and trusted in uh, assessing fish assemblages. Both of these methods have some good and bad features. That's one of the reasons we use them together. For, for dive service, they're good. Divers are particularly good at capturing cryptic fish and site attached species, vulnerable, particularly vulnerable to fishing. As mentioned, they capture other components of the food web, the macroalgae um, and the macroinvertebrates, which is a, re is a real strength of this technique. They generate pretty pictures and video, which is important in um, our extension products uh, to promote you know, outcomes to the wider community, for example, talks like these. And I'm a bit old-fashioned, but I still think it's really important to have humans in the, um, in the water or measuring and understanding your ecosystems firsthand, because it helps in interpreting um, data and making and you know, testing some of your assumptions later on. You know, humans also pick up things you might not have previously considered in, in things you might measure. The bad? Well, divers. They're smelly, they're messy, they need training. Um, just because you dive doesn't mean you can run off to the sunset collecting good quality data. It does take a, you know, a fair bit of experience and training to get a good team together to collect your data. They're limited by depth and safety. So there's some areas, particularly around seal colonies, that we don't deploy divers because of risk. Some fish are diver shy, uh, particularly those that are uh, targeted by humans. Conversely, you also get aggregations of fish that are attracted to divers. They can be a bit like paparazzi and you'll get a cloud of fish around a diver. Both these are um, biased the, the results, but those biases are consistent as the methods applied standard across all sites. Um, bruvs, the good. This, um, this picture here shows a screen of the two stereo screens together for measuring fish. So they produce accurate size measurements. And uh, fish biomass is one of the most sensitive metrics um, for detecting change, and you need um, accurate size to do that. They are deployable in a range of depths and habitats. You're only limited by your rope, pretty much, in terms of depth, and they can go across um, all sorts of habitats. And they create a permanent record, which is always good if you need to revisit the data or check um, the validity or accuracy. Some of the limitations of bruvs are that they can be biased towards carnivorous fish by the use of the bait basket. Data processing, um, there's an overhead there for every hour of BRUV that you record. There's one to two hours in the lab of processing that, depending on the complexity of the um, fish community you're looking at. 
and sometimes there can be a lack of context. So if you, if you drop bruv on the sea floor, you'll get a screen grab of what it's seeing. Could be looking at seagrass, whereas behind you, there could be a reef system that you're not aware of unless you've got adequate mapping or you've read your sounder properly. So there's a little bit of lack of context, um, which can improve if you've got some good mapping. So I've talked a bit in general about their use. Um, what about in the South Australian Marine Park context? What we've got here is just um, the Encounter Marine Park. And I've put that up to show our current deployment of bruvs and dive for this, the 15-16 field season. So this greater blue area is Encounter Marine Park. The green shaded areas are our priority sanctuary zones that we're interested in. A fish represents the bruv site, a diver represents diving. So for some areas like Bay of Shoals, which is a shallow seagrass um, ecosystem, uh, not that suitable for dive monitoring, we, we've established um, bruv, sorry, we're about to. There's some existing work done by KI. Um, and the pages is a, got a few seal colonies there, so we'll probably only be doing bruv there. But for some of these other sanctuaries, Ordinga, Caracalinga, Rapid Head, Sponge gardens, we've deployed both methods and we think and we've done this because we believe that they'll provide a more complete picture um, of the fish assemblages and that will lead us to better um, baseline to answer the questions that Simon mentioned previously, which is about are we protecting biodiversity, maintaining ecological processes, re resilience to climate change and um, enabling public appreciation and enjoyment of our marine parks systems. So I'd like to present a little bit of data now to um, look at some of the complementarity. It's only preliminary at this stage because while we've um, completed a number of sanctuary zones, winter is our um, data processing time. And so at the moment, we'll be moving into a phase of watching screens and counting fish. I say we, mostly it's Dimitri, who's our bruv master, but we've only got some data for a couple of sanctuary zones, the Isle of St. Francis, West of Sejuna, and Rapid Head Sanctuary, which we can see here. So let's have a look what we're finding. This graph here basically shows the distribution of fish species across trophic levels or feeding groups as recorded by the two methods. So fish, if you're fish, you're either eating plankton, invertebrates, uh, browsing on macroalgae or eating other fish. Obviously there's some overlap in these but as, as basic categories this is a way of looking at the different trophic levels. First thing we can see is that both methods are quite similar in what they're recording across the trophic groups, which is interesting because one, one method is a diver searching actively across 200 metres and the other one is a bruv which is bringing the fish to it. More importantly though, both methods are, because they're recording across um, the trophic groups on offer, the sort of data they're collecting is going to be critical for answering questions around biodiversity, which this trophic diversity will um, help answer and the relationship between the trophic levels will provide information on ecological processes. So we looked at fish feeding. This, is a, this graph is showing where fish occur in the water column as recorded by the two methods. Again, fish can be living on the bottom as benthic, demersal, which is living near or associated with the bottom, or pelagic in the water column. And again, the two methods are capturing fish across all those potential locations in the water column but now we're starting to see a couple of differences. The bruvs, the bruvs in the blue is picking, it's doing a better job of picking up pelagic fish, which is not surprising. You've got a suspended bait basket in the water column. And the diving is much better at picking up benthic fish species, which you know, dives are actively searching through the algae and under rocks and ledges. If we look at the actual fish species on offer and how the two techniques go, which ones pick up um, fish species only uniquely to them or which overlap. Isle of St. Francis Sanctuary Zone, we recorded a total of 101 fish species between the two methods. On the Venn diagram here we can see that 31 species were unique to bruvs, 35 were in common to both methods and 35 were unique to diving. So it's about a third third and third across the um, fish assemblage we uh, recorded. Looking at rapid head sanctuary zone where we got a total of 61 species. Um, again the picture is quite similar. We've got 18 that were unique to bruvs, 20 that were in common and 23 species of fish that were unique to diving. So the take home message here is that 
By using both methods together, you're getting another 30% of the fish species on offer. And I think you know, this is really important because we're trying to get the biggest picture as we can of these assemblages uh, to create a good baseline and answer our questions. And it's interesting that just for the two sanctuary zones, that proportional um, distribution is similar for both methods. Just um, bearing down into those fish, um, prior to marine parks being uh, established, there's a couple of reports commissioned that identified uh, indicator fish that would likely respond um, with protection for fishing. Again, we're looking at how both methods uh, capture these indicator, spe spe indicator species. The bold ones are the primary indicators, and the non-bold ones, or the um, smaller size font, are the secondary indicator species. What's important here is Brothers is particularly good at capturing those species that are important recreationally and commercially. You see you've got King George, Snapper, King George Whiting and Snapper up there, Squid, and the diving is picking up those species that might be considered more um, iconic or charismatic, such as Blue Grope and Harlequin. Again, heap of species in common between the two methods. I guess it's just trying to, what I'm trying to demonstrate here is that using both of them together, they have different strengths in the types of species that they're collecting and will help overall in our interpretation um, of the data. And just to conclude, I hope that I've shown that we're collecting the right data to answer our questions and that the two techniques together are providing more comprehensive data set by which we can hopefully be able to measure the effectiveness of our marine park network. Thank you. Thanks, Danny. You're a chairperson's dream. <laughs> right on time. Has anyone got any um, questions for Danny? Yes. From when? <laughs> um, I'm just wondering, have you done any cost-benefit analysis around like the brubs versus the divers? Because I'm thinking like you could deploy a whole heap of brubs, whereas it's very perhaps a little bit more difficult to deploy a whole heap of people, but then you for the diving part, but then you also mentioned that there's all the processing of the brubs data. So I'm just wondering whether they're similar in terms of cost. Um, it's, it's funny because we have done that in an inf informal way and I was quite surprised at how close they come out together. I was always thinking that brubs would be far more cost, of, you know, cost effective compared to diving, but when we add on the analysis um, and the processing afterwards, and it's not just the processing, there's a whole lot of data coding that goes on before we actually get the images to look at. So that keeps um, our, one of our guys busy coding up the videos and then we've got a computer that's just not running 24 hours a day. Um, so I think we, it works out that Brubs is slightly, might be 10% more efficient if you're looking at how many sites and hours in order you can capture data from compared to diving. But a lot closer than I would have thought. Thanks, anyone else?